to be in with the chance of being a Westlife winner, simply tell me which Westlife video this is. Here it comes, backwards. Is it A, You Raise Me Up, B, World of Our Own, or C, Flying Without Wings? We've got three pairs of tickets to give away. To enter, call 0901 293 0141. Calls cost one pound from a BT landline. Calls from mobiles and other networks may vary. Competition closes midnight Thursday and entrants must be aged 16 or over. Shane, Mark, Cian and Nicky reflect on their 10 years together and pay homage to their legions of fans. In a UTV special, Westlife Back Home, that's next here on UTV. Welcome to Westlife Back Home. Now over the next half hour we'll reflect on 10 years at the top for Northern Ireland's favourite pop act ever. We'll meet the fans, plus a very special fan, and of course we'll get up close and personal with Westlife themselves. In July 1998, five would-be pop stars kick-started a career that would see them become one of the music industry's top-selling acts. They had the looks, the ambition and the talent, something that was quickly recognised by the right people. I knew within 30 seconds of seeing them for the first time, I was going to sign them to a record deal. I want to know... After the band was chosen and, you know, the final lineup was ready to roll, that was probably the most exciting part of it all, really, you know, the, the, the first time to ever go to a recording studio, record a song, even hear a song that we were going to be recording, I suppose, was was a, such a big thrill to us. It was a bit weird when I first got into the studio, because it was, it was um, I was almost a bit disappointed, because I kind of kind of questioned um, my confidence a little bit, you know, because um, I, I didn't get it as, uh, straight away. Just look around, and all of the people that we used to know we had to kind of be different, you know, there was a lot of different bands out there at the time and, you know, I think Five were the big boy band at the time and they were very kind of, you know, they were rapping and dancing and different things like that and they were brilliant, you know, they had a lot of success at the time, um, but for us we had to be different. We did sort of focus from day one on the vocals, you know, um, and that was something that was just natural really it wasn't something that's it's not a marketed thing or whatever it's just the way we are while it was simon cowell who offered the boys that all-important recording contract it was boy zones manager louis walsh who was preparing westlife as pop's next big thing to have louis behind us um was was was, was everything and if i was going to make this step and really devote my life and give up everything to being a pop band i really had to believe in it and i think with, with what boy zone had done um, and we're continuing to do with Louis involved, that was the way to do it. They watch bands like like Five and Blue and A1 just come and go, so they didn't want to be like those bands. They wanted to be like, take that, you know, and last forever. It's all about being successful. That success was instant as the band's debut single, Swear It Again, went straight to the top of the UK charts and went on to become an international hit. I swear It Again it was a massive hit for us all over the world and it was different, it was very different for a band to come out with a song like that at the time. There wasn't many ballad singing boys or whatever, or groups or whatever at the time. So for us it was different and we set our mark straight away. I remember the first day that I got Swear It Again in my hands and played it on the show. And I listened to the first verse of it before I played it on the radio. And I remember what I said, I held the CD in my hands, went live on the air, and I said, this is a band who are going to be massive. I'm never the first time I actually saw them or heard them, I thought, you know, is this a boy's own derivative? Is it just a boy's own play it out? Is Louis pulling the strings here and putting a, just something together? I'd be honest, the first time I heard them, I thought this, is, this would be a one-hit wonder. Whenever the, the first song, Swear It Again, was released, it was going to be a success. You know, it was radio-friendly, it was safe enough, it appealed to their market. It did what it said on the tin, and it went to number one, and it was the first of many. With song after song hitting the top spot, Westlife were laying the groundwork for the huge success to come. 
the band had well and truly arrived. To be honest with you, that first album, you know, the five singles that were chosen off that album, that was what did it all. All the singles of the first album, I think, were very strong, and I think, even more importantly, they weren't the same song over and over again. They were all different, but they all had sort of a sound that was in every one of them. I think the early songs like If I Let You Go, they created this kind of Westlife sound. Everybody knew, once you hear a record on the radio, you think, that's Westlife. Can't believe that I'm a they were releasing classic pop songs. I also think that the fact that they came across as, you know, lovely Irish blokes, you know, you know I, I think they really had the full package. The band's fan base has always been diverse, with every hit single bringing new devotees on board. You see, everybody loves a bit of Westlife.